Davis? Humanity needs economic growth. There is a crisis, there's a crisis of poverty. Uh, Paul is on a good salary. So there, there, there is no country. climate crisis. Well, the climate, uh, the average temperatures measured over 170 years is up 1.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, there have been periods uh, where it's leapt 5, 7 degrees Celsius and fallen. You know, the Irish, so there isn't one? Uh, there is no crisis at the moment. Okay. Uh, now, is, is there a risk of a, of a problem in 100 years? Yeah, but we'll be an awful lot richer in 100 years. There's a lot of adaptation. that we, You think what our ancestors have been through. Like, even, even when I was small, I, I remember my grandparents talking about uh, the uh, Spanish flu, like 40% of the houses on the street in Belfast had uh, had suffered Spanish flu. And every now and again, you heard a whisper about what their grandparents had said in the aftermath of the famine. Uh, that was a crisis. What we're living through is not a crisis. And the richer we get and the better we invest our money, mm. the more able we are to deal with future challenges. Didn't expect this to go down the route of climate denial. Well, uh, I, it's not, I'm not denying anything. The, the, the well, yeah, you're, you're denying, denying, you're denying, denying that there's a climate example. crisis. I'm, well, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you mean by a crisis? Crisis would be if there were, say, 10 times as many people dying from climate-related accidents as 100 years ago. In fact, there's, there only, there's only 5% as many deaths uh, now as there were 100 years ago. Humans have made tremendous progress and we will continue to make tremendous progress and the only parts of the world where there are major casualties, for example, from this earthquake, hope you're not going to blame that on emissions, uh, isn't in Japan or California. It's in very poor countries where people so don't have proper construction in, because people like you won't let them develop. In the Horn the of Africa. Horn of, the, the efficient fuels in, that are available. In the Horn of Africa, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people now on the verge of starvation and that famine is universally accepted by the scientists, just as the scientists are very, very, very clear scientific consensus against what you're saying in terms of climate change. They say the driving factor of this famine is climate change. Well, first Hundreds first, of thousands of people first, on the well, verge of starvation. Science is, not, and, uh, science is about questioning and an over mind. It's not, it's not a doctrine. You're treating it like the works of no, Marx. But there is a, cons- take there is a consensus. The IPCC. Why, why do you science, reject the findings of the IPCC? There was a consensus IPCC? against Galileo. There was consensus uh, against Einstein. Oh my God. I mean, of course, fossil fuel companies don't want us to recognise their reality. But that's why we can't allow people like him, who was driven by his private profit. He, that's all he cares about. He's willing for all of humanity to go down to absolute catastrophe. Well, actually, we need to get off so oil and gas as quickly as possible. The, the, the consensus that, that, that stood opposed to Galileo was not based on scientific evidence. It was based on religious fervour. Exactly, which is very much like Paul no, today. Yeah, but no, but, 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 religious fervor. Fervor. but this is faith. This is doctrine. So, so you think that it's it's uh, religious fervor that has informed the IPCC, well, and, it, and not scientific no, evidence. The IPCC uh, is a body of work that I have actually worked my way through. Yeah, it's not many times. not many clerics involved in it. There's a but, lot. Of, there are lots of clerics involved in it. They're, they're called clerics by different names. You try to get financing to challenge. You try to get You're financing to You're challenge the fuel consensus. Company. Very hard to get finance to challenge a consensus. Whereas if you come up with some derivative, unoriginal duplicate of work, it's much easier to finance. And PhD students, like anybody else, they follow the money. But the reality is that uh, uh, any advances is done by questioning. You should never be afraid of data. You should never be afraid of logic. There are many things in science that have totally sure. changed since I was in school. I can, I can list them if you want. And many, many more things that you take as Pe- faith will be shown to be untrue. People should choose whether they want to listen to a non-scientist who is the chairman of a fossil fuel company or the scientific consensus well, we on climate scientists. change. We People. employ geologists, geophysicists, <laughs> engineers. Uh, I mean, you referred, for example, to... Climatologists? Exxon. Well, why would you need a climatologist? To, uh, well, because we're talking <laughs> about climate, and in defense of your denial of climate change, you pointed out all the scientists that you... Uh, we have that, better that than you, that. We what? have fossil records. We know what the climate was like in the tertiary and the Jurassic. We don't the need the experts. We've had enough of experts. No, on the contrary. Uh, we, as an industry, we heavily rely on experts, not just in the fossil fuel business, also in lithium and zinc and other businesses which are critical to the new economy. So can I ask, if you don't uh, employ climate scientists, where do you get your climate knowledge from. But looking at the data, we know that, for example, there so were you, fossils. So it's you, you, you personally Google well, the data. We geologi- no, we don't rely on Google. We have geologists, lots of PhDs, professors, geophysics, lots of disciplines, petrophysics, you name it. There are literally dozens of specialties in our industry. And so it's the geologist who's given you climate science no, advice? the geologist gives you fossil evidence of okay. what species existed, for example, in Antarctica and Greenland in, say, the Jurassic. And you can see tropical animals 
from time to time in those parts of the world. So you know that the average temperature on planet Earth must have been over 20 degrees, otherwise there would be no oil and gas generated. The fact that there is oil and gas that can be discovered shows that in the past temperatures have been higher as well as lower. Sure.